So hi, and uh, welcome to I Fought the Law. I'm Richard Every. I'm sitting here in the USA, and with me is uh, Steve Lander, former international referee in England. Hi, Steve. Hi, Richard. Afternoon, morning, or wherever it is in the world. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, what we do on this podcast is we talk about laws, the application, guidelines, etc., what works, what doesn't work, and uh, try and get some clarification. And we're going to get right into it and start off with the uh, the fun one, the Scotland France no try from the Six Nations on the on the weekend. So, um, first thing I just want to cover quickly is the TMO protocol because obviously that's changed over the years, Steve, and you 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 know you're well aware of it. And um, you know what they have currently is they talk about formal referrals, and uh, they just give you two two scenarios, which is on field decision try with reasoning to substantiate such and then on-field decision, no try. Um, what are your thoughts on, <laughs> on that approach? Uh, I, I mean, ch things have changed so much over the years. I mean, mm -hmm. when I when I was refereeing in the middle in similar games, it, it, it was entirely my decision and you, you had to get into the best place to see what you needed to see mm -hmm. and hope you saw the try scored or, or not scored, and and it it wasn't perfect, which has brought about the assistance of first of all assistant referees, and then uh, and then the the, the TMO. Um, at the end of the day, that in my view, the referee is responsible still for getting into the right position to make a decision as to whether a try has been scored or not, and he, he can only make that decision on on the information that he sees. Right. And this uh, try no try actually came from uh, came from Super Rugby initially, didn't it? The try yeah, no try yeah. approach. I believe so, and I think I think with like a lot of the laws that they've they've been simplified down so much, the original nuances of the laws have been obscured, and in simplification, yeah. they've actually caused compli caused complication, and which Absolutely. is what I think, which is what I think we saw saw in this situation, and and. That this won't be the last time that it happens. At, at the end of the day, it comes down to rubber the greens. Some decisions go for you, some go against you. But what doesn't help is, is some of the imaging and discussion that people have sat sat in their armchairs at home or stood sat in the stadium see. Absolutely. And if we look at these, um, I mean, uh, the one thing that it does when they say on field decisions to try or no try, it sort of puts it puts them in a box kind of thing, right? The, the the way that they approach it and that leaves very little margin for the for the TMO really in many occasions, I, especially in tight call. For sure. And I think rightly so, the, the the TMO has to find irrefutable evidence that the mm. referee has made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not actually a mistake on the referee's part. It's that the referee hasn't got that piece of information. Right. And 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 for me, the role of the TMO is to provide that piece of information, that missing piece of the jigsaw, if you like, that the referee mm -hmm. hasn't got. And then yeah. the referee still is responsible for making the decision. So when we look at this, I mean, we're just looking at stools here, but they, I mean, the ball was clearly held up for a moment and then it sort of moved. And then eventually it ended up over here where... Um, it seems it seems pretty clear that the ball is, um, you know, if we look over here, we can see the balls on the ground, right? Yeah. So we know the balls on the ground. So, um, the, what the, information would the TMO have to have seen to 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 say to the referee to change their decision? I think the TMO should actually find that find that piece of information and convey that information to the referee that the ball ended up on the ground that still doesn't actually make it a try because how right. long definitely definitely mm -hmm. take this take the take this um example away from it. it it's how long are you going to allow players to wrestle with the ball once they're over the goal line before <laughs> they get the ball to the ground right and, and nobody's really ever solved that and yeah. and people talk about one movement the same movement immediately Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And and I think in this situation, the ball undoubtedly was initially held up, mm -hmm. and then found its way to the ground. And I and I 
what what doesn't help is when people hear the conversation that the referee is having with the TMO because yeah. they become everybody everybody becomes invested in it then you know Absolutely. that 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 conversation was should have included how long did it take to get that ball to the ground mm -hmm. right for me you know, so, and the, so you know people people can show all the stills they like of the ball on the ground mm -hmm. There's no doubt that the ball was initially in this situation and in many other situations yeah. initially held up. So how mm -hmm. long are you allow them to get it to the ground? And also at what point did the referee blow the whistle, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. So, but if the referee had come back and said um, on-field decisions a try, then it would have been a try, right? Yes, in it In this would. situation, yeah. It would. And, and, yeah. and only the referee in these situations, not necessarily this, this situation, Mm -hmm. knows what his thought process was clearly in this situation as i saw it his thought process was the ball was held up right. end up, and then it ended up on the ground now there is an argument he didn't leave it long enough for the ball to be transferred to the ground right but you're right at the point at which he blew his whistle he thought the ball was held up i believe Absolutely. and then it found its way to the ground mm -hmm. yeah and and there therein lies the 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 sort of <clears throat> misty, murky details of when is a try and not a try. Maybe when they're doing the rock and roll, they should have the sound on so you can hear the referee's whistle. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so obviously, you know, the on-field decision does influence the outcome with the TMO, right? And then um, when we look at the referee's position, he was actually in a great position. It was right there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and it was absolutely right there. If you went back to the old days, nobody would have. If he made that decision in 1995, nobody, yeah. nobody would have even argued with him, because <laughs> he was close enough to yeah. for everybody to assume that he saw the right information not to award a try. Yeah, and yeah. and what what has complicated it is the protocols that we've had in the last you know, 10 years or whatever, gradually changing the various processes. Absolutely. And, and for me, the only way you can get to these decisions is for the ref for the, the TMO to say, this is what I've got, and the referee to review his decision based upon the information that he's got. And and I actually think that's what happened, happened in this instance, and he came to the same conclusion. Right. The ball wasn't grounded in time. Yeah. You know, it's um, it's one of those. You know, pays yeah. your money, takes your choice. Uh, um, it's not refereeing's never been an exact science, never right. will be an exact science, and there will always be situations where where people have bar discussions, club discussions, podcast sure. discussions <laughs> as as to whether they would have given a try or not. Yeah. It's 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 interesting though because you know when when we talk about all these like pick and goes at, at at the goal line we often you know the referee would be in this position so that they could actually see the ball and then you know we often ask referees to come and stand over here so that they on the line of defence rather than necessarily in the way here and then you know if the pick and go if if the ball is held up held back again they normally come back again to make sure the ball's available but in this position yeah they're either going to sort of squat the referee's feet or if they decide to go this way around you know the referee can always go this way back to I mean, see in, you know yeah, to the ball in these in these situations there is there is no right and there is no wrong yeah the only right thing is that you have sight of the ball all of the time <laughs> the and, basics of refereeing yeah and, and that that you move to a position where you can keep sight of the ball, yeah, and, and hope that you don't look like a a, a rabbit in the headlights running round scared <laughs> because you can't see it. You know, you've got to yeah. try and remain as calm and composed as you can, keep sight of the ball, and then make a decision when it crosses the goal line. Yeah, which yeah. is which is exactly what what this situation was, and because mm. because the ball ended up on the ground did not necessarily. Make it make it a try in some people's eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So let's get on to the next one, which is a lot more fun because I think we there's quite a lot of disagreement in it. <clears throat> Talk about the high tackle, right? Yeah. So there's a high the high tackle on the French number thirteen by Scotland number eleven. 
And now, just before we get to that, the head contact process in March 2021 said, has head contact occurred? No, play on. So because suddenly all, all of the head contact sort of seem to be about high tackles, right? It sort of felt like it eliminated everything else. And then they started talking about, I know there was some some um, sort of, some of the top referees in the world were like, you know, if it's on the shoulder, it's not making contact with the neck, play on, that kind of thing, right? And yeah. then And then what happened is in 2023, World Rugby changed it, that it says no head contact process outside head contact protocol, which goes back to the laws. Yeah. And they actually even they actually even include this with that with that whole protocol, right? They include law 913. So we get back to, you can't tackle opponent above the line of shoulders. But now it's made it very sort of, it's made it a gray area. It is always a very <laughs> black and white yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. Again, again, you, you tweak the laws, you change the laws, you change them because something happens and you actually, rather than simplifying a situation and clarifying a situation, you complicate a situation. There's two, there's two separate laws here. There's head contact and dangerous play because of head contact. Yeah. And there's high tackle, which it, which is specifically writ, written in law. And it, it's, it's, it's what law the referee applies in, yeah. in, in a, a, a situation where contact is made on or around the shoulders. I mean, we used to have a situation where you could grab a player by the collar and swing him around, and it was okay. <laughs> you know, and clearly that's 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 prima facie a dangerous play now. And yeah, I think the, the only thing that you would say about contact above or on a, on and around the line of the shoulders is was it dangerous? So here's you know, my he, question, though. Yeah, I know what the question. So... Yeah. <laughs> So we look at this and clearly he ended up being the last defender, right? Because he actually took out his own defender. Yeah. Right. So he knocked his own defender out of the way and he was always going high. At no point he was going to go make a proper, a regular tackle. He was going high. Right. So his arms were going over the shoulders mm. and, um, you know, they have that whole discussion about, oh, is it in, in the line of the shoulders, on top of the shoulders, no head contact, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's been a discussion. And there's been quite a lot, in, I think, even in the premiership where they've played on through some of these, right? Yeah. Um, and then there was, um, in the Six Nations um, two weeks ago, there was also one in the Wales, um, in the Wales-Scotland game. Where there was an uh, over-the-shoulder tackle on, uh, on a Welsh player. And yeah. um and, and the referee said hand on the ball or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean pe people calling this a seatbelt tackle. This isn't a seatbelt tackle. This is this is a grab at the shoulder. And the only way that you'll simplify this is by drawing an imaginary line ha uh, uh, across the chest uh and having a, that defined as a as a, a line that you can't make contact above. But we, have, well, we, we haven't actually got that in law as such. If they're going to bring it down to sternum, this is definitely going to be a high tackle. But even right now in law 913, it's very clear it's above the shoulders, right? It's above the shoulders. He's but the last offender. I, I believe that the reason above the shoulder terminology and wordology has been brought into it is because of the contact with the head. Because it's not actually dangerous to tackle somebody's shoulder. Yeah, it's, but above the shoulders has been in for decades. For, I mean, since since, since the nineties, right? Yeah, forever. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since the, well, yeah. not in not in the eighties because I remember we all tackled high back then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, above the shoulder is brought in because it was dangerous, and mm -hmm. then it then it got defined as you can't tackle on or above the shoulder. But it mm -hmm. was all it was all gathered together because of the 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 fear of of, of people taking head contact. I know, but they, they they never put that in the law, right? So they can say above the shoulder if you make head contact, that's fine. But it, here's my question for you. And uh, now, if we allow this, it's going to be so easy because why would you want to tackle low? Because then the player can just pass the ball. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. But if yeah, we which, tackle high, we can't possible. For sure. Which at grassroots level is exactly what's happening now. Worldwide, that's exactly what's happening. It's just that we've got this difference between international level and or premiership level in, in a number of countries and grassroots level. Now, some, somebody somewhere way above our pay grade has got to, has got to, has got to, you know, bring the law together and say the yeah. game of rugby is not going to, in the game of rugby, you cannot tackle above sternum, nipple, whatever, yeah. wherever you draw the line. And yeah. if you do, you're liable to penalty. And then mm-hmm. again, you then go to the referee will then say that was definitely above the the designated line. Yeah. Was it so it is a penalty minimum? Mm-hmm. Did it was there was there a degree of danger? And was there head contact as a result? You probably go to a yellow card situation. The, you know, the referee may decide yellow card. Yeah, but what and did malice come into it? Then you go to a red card. Yeah, but I mean, the, those are so many questions. I mean, if it's just like you can't tackle above the shoulders, but now every single time there's going to be a breakaway, everyone's going to tackle above the shoulders. <clears throat> so now you have to decide whether they're going to make neck, neck contact or not, because why, why would you tackle them lower? Because then they've got the access to the ball still. So you just want to yeah. tackle them high. So you take away the access for the ball. So now everyone's going to be doing that at all levels of the game. And then the referee's yeah, going to have to now, the referees have to debate. So now, the foul play area is now a referee responsibility and not a player responsibility. Because what we always say with referees, like you put the onus on players, right, to play within the law. And yeah. according to the law, yeah. as it stands right now, this is illegal. So it's much easier to the, just say, tackle below the shoulders. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. the whole complication for me comes comes into the into into it in so much as the the whole reason for not tackling above a certain height is that it brings the head into play and is dangerous yeah there that you know because it is not dangerous to grab somebody's shirt by the shoulder or by the sleeve upper sleeve it's not it's not dangerous but so so we've got two laws that have been ground in together Mm -hmm. which has just made it impossible for the referee to referee it because you're right as the law stands at the moment, a player cannot put his arm over the over another player's shoulder, grab the shirt, and pull him to the ground. Yep. That's illegal. So, anyway, um, and should in a penalty. Yeah, they 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 are looking at uh, revising some of the law book, but um, who who knows if they'll actually look at that? Um, <laughs> last one to talk about is the conversion <laughs> kick prevented, right? <laughs> so first of all, let's just look at the clarification in 2020. It said the moment the kicker moves in any direction, it's deemed that he's approaching the kick or he or she is approaching the kick, right? Um, and they they were trying to simplify it. But I think like after after the World Cup, you know, when that happened in the quarterfinal where the, where the ball was charged down, that now there's a lot more focus on it and a lot of, a lot of players are going to try it. So first of all, as a referee, you would think, especially at professional level, that you will know exactly what every kicker does, right? So you know at what point you're going to allow them to charge or not. And even if you're doing community rugby, you know, when teams are warming up, normally the kickers are kicking, et cetera, you know. But this player always takes about four steps to the left, puts his hands on his body like that, you can see, and then he takes one more step to the left and then looks at the poles, looks at the ball and then kicks. You know, yeah. However, well, how, however, on that one step, they charged because I mean, and the analysis now is so intense and so good that the Welsh analysts will have said we we can actually it's it's the equivalent of scoring two points here if we charge mm. this out. Many teams don't even look at the kicker when he's kicking because they take yeah. it as an opportunity. For a, a, a team meeting b- behind the goal line to to get, to gather themselves, but there's no doubt here that the the Welsh were very clued in, and I I wouldn't be at all surprised if this wasn't discussed at the pre-match briefing with the referee. Mm-hmm. And the do referee, you think, do you think that the referees will start 
<laughs> holding their hand in the air. <laughs> and then as the player moves, they take their arm down. <laughs> well, I, I think it could be really easily simplified that you can't charge any kick. Like, like you can't charge a penalty. You can't charge an, an, a, a, you know, uh, an attempted <laughs> drop goal from a penalty. Therefore, you can't charge uh, a kick at goal. That would that would that would simplify it. Because yeah. again, in trying to solve one law, they've actually created a problem for another law. Because people were concerned about time wasting, and rightly so. And yet. Now they've said there's a stop clock. And so any player can do a number of different things to legitimately not approach the ball to kick it until yeah. three seconds before the stop clock runs out. So the stop clock has has done one thing, but it's created something mm. else. Is and it called a shot clock, is it? Shot clock, yeah. Shot yeah. clock, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, mean, I, I Ooh. Again, if, if you're asking me what should a grassroots referee do and what would I have done in this situation, first of all, at the team meeting, I would have said, you can't, you cannot charge until he moves forward, irrespective mm -hmm. of what the law says. Yeah. And if it, at grassroots level, I would say exactly the same. You mm -hmm. know, a player that steps to the side to, as part of his preparation to kick, that's not attempting the kick. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Personally, that's where, where I would draw the line and that's where I would manage it. And it's dead simple as the referee, just put your hand up and make the players hesitate, mm -hmm. um, which in general refereeing is what we do. A, a referee that is really managing the game well only has to say the right thing at the right time or just put his hand up at the right time, create hesitation in a player and the situation's gone. Yeah. It happens with offside. Absolutely, it happens yeah. happens with entering mm -hmm. the breakdown. And and this this would this would be no difference because yeah. this this is not a good look for the game, not a good look. Well, what about the um, trying to keep the back lines back and never looking at them? You know, of course, um, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, what every referee should do now is that they should be one hundred percent aware of, of 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 the kicker's movement, yeah. and always like I mean, the the great thing in in refereeing. Um, that, that helps you is that, you know, try and take all the doubts away, right? So you just want to be, make, make sure you, you're in control of it. And you can, you can even see the players are thinking of moving and you can just put your hand up and then take and it down. You, know, you actually don't have to stop them coming forward. You just have to make them hesitate and they won't get there in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so, so what they did is that what happened in the South Africa France game was that the fact that that kicker, because they say any direction now, the kicker takes a step back, right? Yeah. And Again, then, but that's, but that's not the intent. That wasn't the intention of the law. Again, simplification has caused mm. compl complication. Yeah. Players and coaches will always use the laws, and it's their job to use the laws, and it's the referee's mm. job to yeah. uphold the laws and manage the laws and manage the playing environment. I mean, you know, I'm you know my mantra on that. And yeah. in this is a situation that could easily have been avoided. And I suspect it could have been avoided mm. at the pre-match briefing. It could certainly have been avoided on the pitch. Yeah. Because <clears throat> all, all he had to do was put his hand up and stop Wales charging. In but, the second in the second half, the player did exactly the same thing and nobody charged, right? I mean yeah. exactly the same thing and that extra step that the player takes. Because, so because I, I mean, fair play to to mm. the Welsh coaches and the Welsh players, they'd have, they've achieved their objective. They've actually, yeah. in effect, scored two points mm -hmm. by using the laws as they're written. But right. my argument would be that as they're written is not the the intention. We right. all know when a player starts his preparation to kick. Mm -hmm. You know, and and we know when he moves to kick the ball, and in this situation, irrespective of what the law says, I think better management or looking at at the management, it 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 could have could have been prevented. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but on that note, on that note, we're going to finish. But I see that um, 
maybe maybe next week we'll talk about the knock on that sort of knock back or kick back and then also look at the charge down because I see the charge down law is now going to be the you know they're looking at rewriting it as well but that's story for next time Steve thanks for your time pleasure and, uh, pleasure always happy always happy to ch to chat laws as you know um certainly haven't got all the answers so that you know and it, it uh and in many ways the more you talk about it the more the more confusing it gets doesn't it yeah well I mean it's all about just providing clarity for yourself as a referee and yeah. um you know your application and, being yeah. consistent yeah yeah. yeah, if we're consistent, people can't argue. They may not agree with you, but they say he did that for both teams in all situations. No, nobody's going to argue with that. Absolutely. Thank you. Goodbye. Pleasure, mate. Speak soon. Cheers.